Hi guys, so we're out today replacing front pads on a um, Foxhall Adam. So let's get involved with that. First thing we're going to do is just twist this wheel out, gives me better access to what I'm working on here um, rather than fighting inside the wheel arch. And now, if you look in here, there's an inspection hole. You want to measure off the back pad um, because that will wear out faster, so that will be more worn than the front. And these here, currently sitting at 4 mil. Uh, manufacturer specification is minimum thickness of 2 mil. Customer has been advised that it's not quite at minimum standards yet, but she wants to go ahead with replacing them anyway. So we're just going to start by undoing this bolt down here. These have self-locking tabs on here, so you don't have to worry about holding it. You just undo the 13 mil bolt, and then we're going to flick it up. I'm just going to take an impact to the bolt at the back. Snap that off like so. Then we can compress this slightly. Before you go ahead with uh, compressing that piston, you want to take this cap off. Don't leave it out because you don't want to bring it in, so just leave it on there like that. What that does, it, um, it allows a little bit of relief to the pressure inside the braking system. So when you compress these pistons back in now, it won't damage the master cylinder. And uh, it'll be a nice pressure-freed system. Now this does just require an element of just brute force. With the leverage on it it's like so now you don't want to put too much pressure on here you don't want to go too fast because that will be adding pressure to if I knock you out but that will be adding pressure to the braking system so my screwdriver just slipped off there so just very gently and evenly press that back you don't want any jolts or anything like that no, this isn't quite all the way back. I'm going to use a, um, a brake wire back tool to push the rest of the way in, but you could just knock this, this pad off, which is stuck, and leverage it back in on that one. But I'm going to use a wire back tool. All right, so with that now moving freely in there, you can just lift it off. Pop it in off this boot because you're going to be greasing this anyway. And then hang it up out of the way. You don't want any strain on these flexi hoses. So I've put it up on a hook here. You can do it any way you want, as long as it's not any strain on these hoses. Right. That's come undone there. Let's see these are a little bit stuck. That one seems to be moving fine, but this inner one. Needs a little bit of extra persuasion, it looks like. Got a leaf stuck in there. These are the original GM brakes. They're on a 16 plate car, so yeah, they're definitely uh, stiff as hell as well. Right, we're going to clean these up now. Now we're just going to clean all this up. Give it all a good blast with some brake clean. I'm going to give these shims a clean. And then I'm going to take them out and give the metal underneath them a clean as well. This is literally just going to go over it with a wire brush like this. Just get all the very grimy brake dust off of it, like that. I'm going to do it to all four sides. And I'm going to pop this off and uh, go underneath it. Okay, so with these shims and the seats for the pads all nicely cleaned off, I'm just going to pull this out, clean this all off, and apply some new red rubber grease to that. And then uh, that's what it wants to look like. The reason you're using red rubber grease is because it's friendly to this rubber and to this rubber it's got a high melting point and it's uh, very good at lubricating so that will move back and forth nice and freely. I'm just going to push it in. I'm going to burp it out here, that air that was in there. And that's now moving freely. I'm going to repeat the same on this one, so literally all I'm doing is spraying it down with some brake clean, wiping it off with a rag, and then applying some red rubber grease to it. 
So we've got that nicely greased up now. It's just come to refit the pads. I just found on the box and these new shims. I didn't realize they come with them. So I didn't actually have to clean up the old ones, but now you know if you don't have shims that you have to clean it up. So that's all good. So there are the new ones fitted there. These have here, yeah, these are anti-squeal, anti-rattle shims. They're built into the pad, so you do not need to apply any sort of grease here whatsoever. I have put a touch of ceramic grease on the contact points from here. Um, you don't need to put anything else anywhere else. So then these here then, I'm gonna put them at an angle, push them forward, and slot it in like that. It should move freely like that. Too freely. That, that there is perfect. If yours isn't moving that freely, then you need to take them off and clean up again. And then with this back one, you have here a mechanical wear indicator. So when the pads wear down, that will rub against the disc and let you know. Uh, you try and try to take that. So where the wheel spins, it pushes it into the pad rather than pulling it away and snapping it off. So the top on the inside. It's moving in there freely as well. Now we're just going to twist that all the way in. Out. Now with that cleaned up, got a new shim fitted on the inside. I'm just going to refit it onto the pads. So we've literally just slid the pin in, and then we're going to drop it down over the pads, push the pin down the bottom in, get our new bolt, spin that in by hand quickly, and then I'm going to get the torque the tap the torque spec for that and torque it down to manufacturer specification. Obviously, if you don't have a torque wrench, then just do it tight. So the torque spec on this is 27.5, which might not sound a lot or feel a lot, but if you look at the size difference between my torque wrench and my spanner, you'll see there's a heck of a lot more leverage on there than it is the spanner. So I might be used to cracking down on it with a spanner really hard, but I obviously don't have to with a torque wrench. So now what we have here and that you can see it there is we have a, a gap from where the piston has been pushed in. So we're gonna to have to pump the pedal and have that sit out properly with the compressed back in so there's not as much travel in the pedal when the customer goes to the drive off. Uh, that's it now, so they're all done. Uh, I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side. But I'm not going to bore you with that. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And I'll see you with some more mechanical work shortly. Thanks, guys.